Good morning, everyone. My name is Rachel Fisher, and I'm the member services librarian for technical services. And thank you for joining us today for the Acquisitions in Leap version 7.2 webinar. Today, I'm going to begin this webinar as I have the previous webinars by reviewing what is and isn't functioning in LEAP with version 7.2. This will provide you with a full idea of what LEAP is capable of at this time. Then I will switch to LEAP um, and review how to bulk add titles to purchase orders. I'll use this purchase order to demonstrate the new purchase order line item actions that have been added to Polaris for 7.2. Then I'll end by demonstrating canceling an invoice and line items. Links to the training resources are in the PowerPoint slides that I'll send out after the webinar. So in the previous sessions, I reviewed a similar slide listing what you can and can't do in LEAP. I've updated it for 7.2, so you can get an idea of how Innovative is progressing with their upgrades. If you attended the previous acquisition session, this will be familiar to you. Fiscal year, fund, and supplier records can be created and edited. The only functions missing from the fund records are the ability to adjust encumbrances or expenditures and the fund hierarchy view. You can import the on order records. One moment. Uh, you can import the on order records with mark import using express import but not full import. This means that you cannot alter most of the settings of the import profile before importing a file. Leap still only allows the EDI ordering and invoicing workflow. This includes bulk adding titles to a purchase order and paying the invoices that were created by the EDI process. With 7.2, you now have the ability to cancel a purchase order line item or change its status. An example would be changing it to returned. You can now credit the invoices and invoice line items. However, ASN and EDI processing for partial shipments are not in LEAP yet. The manual functions for acquisitions will not be added until 7.3, but hopefully that release will be available um, Soon, So we'll be adding the 7.3 upgrade in October, and I will need to take some time to um, test it out to make sure everything's functioning properly. And um, then we'll have to work on training documentation and decide on when to upgrade production, but we have not decided on when that will be. But it is going to be um, a major addition to our acquisitions course, so it may take some time for me to create that training material. So this is the page of training resources that um, you'll have access to after the session. So I have added some new videos and um, exercises to the guided activities for you to practice after the webinar is over. One moment while I switch to the um, browser. Are there any questions on my presentation before I uh, begin the demonstration in LEAP? All right, um, I'm going to begin with bulk adding 
titles to the purchase order. To save a bit of time, I'm not going to import the records now. Um, I've already created a record set of records that have a 970 field in them. If you were importing the records today, um, you would find mark import under utilities at the bottom. So um, I've opened up this report, the record set already that I've prepared, and I'm going to demonstrate how to bulk add the titles to the purchase order. There are two actions menus in record sets. The top one is the one that you use to access the buttons for bulk adding the titles to the purchase order. So I'm going to bulk add them to a new purchase order. If I were to choose bulk adding the titles to the existing purchase order, it would open up the find tool so I could find that purchase order. So first I'm going to type in the um, purchase order number, oh, but I'm, I'm using Gray's Lake records. So I'm gonna select Gray's Lake. And one of the features that has not been added yet to 7.2 is um, the links dropdown menu to easily go between um, the record set or, or the bibliographic records in the record set and the purchase order. So you need to copy that purchase order number so that you can find it in the find tool after you've created your purchase order. The other thing that is missing from um, the features in the client is the uh, purchase order template. So I'm gonna have to select the supplier I'm going to need to use the um, filters to quickly select Gray's Lake and press apply. And I'll find one that is an EDI supplier record. So this one is an EDI supplier record, it will do for our demonstration. And then it's important to fill out those line default data dropdown menus so that in any information that is missing from 970 fields will be filled in. So these are adult nonfiction records. So I'll choose adult nonfiction. And then I'll press continue. So I'm going to ignore that report for now that popped up and um, we'll click find to find that purchase order. So under the first drop down menu, I have to select purchase order and it will search for the purchase order number. And open it. So normally I'd want to take a look at that um, error message and review the records. But um, for now, um, I want to focus on just demonstrating the 7.2 features. So um, I've created this purchase order with um, adult nonfiction titles and I'm going to release the purchase order. If you open the actions dropdown menu, you will find release. And I'm gonna generate those on order items, the payment options, dialog box opens and then I'll just press continue.
All right, so now the status has been changed to on order for all of these items. So new with 7.2 is the ability to cancel the purchase order line item. So this is fairly easy to do. You can just click on a line item to be canceled and press the cancel button. And then press continue on the dialog box. Once it is canceled, it changes the status to cancel. If you would like to delete the line item that has been canceled, you can do so by checking the box again and then press delete. You don't have to delete it, but it's up to you. The dialog box will open asking if you're sure you want to delete it, and then you can press continue. The other new feature is to change the um, line item status. In order to do so, you need to open up the line item. If there were additional segments here, you would have to select a segment and then press modify status. So there are a number of statuses that you can choose from. There's back ordered, exceptional condition. I don't know when you'd ever want to use exceptional condition. Never published, not yet published, out of print, return requested or returned. I think it's most we used for just um, cases when you would need to return a damaged item if it was damaged. So then you can update the status to returned. This updates the status to returned, but does not change the payment status. If you do need to credit your invoice for that, if it's already been credited, you will have to open up the invoice and credit the invoice. And this will change the payment status of your line item. Are there any questions on what I've demonstrated so far? If you'd like me to demonstrate anything again, feel free to let me know if I've gone too fast, feel free to uh, just type in the chat or unmute yourself and um, ask me to repeat something again. Uh, Kelly asked if my record set was created by the MARC um, record imports. Um, I, for the purpose of this demonstration, I just created a random record set of records that had 970 fields in them and deleted the process nodes. Um, so I just wanted to skip that step uh, to save time. But normally you would be importing your records from the vendor that have the 970 field in them. And that would then create your record set. You'd be able to then look at your import profile to find the record set name and open it to bulk add your titles to your purchase order. Are there any other questions? And it asks if you would do that the same way that you would do in the staff client. 
Uh, yes, you do. Um, but there are some features that are not available yet. So with Mark Import, um, when you do choose a um, import profile, if you did need to make any changes to the profile, you can't do that yet. In Mark Import in Leap, you can change the display impact setting. For the libraries that um, do not use acquisitions, they do not have the ability to update the item records screen yet if they create item records. Um, and, um, but you do have the ability to edit the record set screen. So this is helpful if you need to change the name of your record set. Then once everything is imported, you will find the reports under cataloging processing. This has the tabs for both bibliographic bulk change and mark import. You'll find your import reports by clicking on the mark import tab. So I'm trying to open up a PDF file. It's a bit slow to load. And there it is. And then you can review it to see if there are any errors and copy their record set from the um, record set section. Does that ask, answer your question, Tana? So um, I will be covering um, importing again when uh, the manual acquisitions have been added um, and we'll be demonstrating the new features for manual acquisitions as well as um, a refresher on bulk adding titles to purchase orders again in that session. So that will be sometime towards the end of the fall, but I'm not sure exactly when yet. So we'll have to decide on when we will be updating production first. Are there any other questions? All right, I'm going to close this now and we will switch to invoices. So right now, because manual invoices are not available, I have to find an existing invoice that someone created and is already in production. I mean, it's already in training. So I have to find that number. I wrote down a number. So in the first drop down menu, I'm going to switch to invoice and just type in an invoice number that I already found for the demonstration. And I'm going to just open up this Grays Lake invoice because this is training, um, we will be replacing this with a fresh copy from production soon. So any actions I do today will be completely erased. And I'm going to now demonstrate crediting the full invoice and crediting line items. So with this one, I'm going to credit the full invoice. 
To do so, you would click on the Actions drop-down menu and press Credit. You will see the uh, check or voucher dialog box open. Type in the number. You can change the payment type and the date and then press credit. Oh, I chose the wrong invoice. I failed to credit it. When I do that again, I'll find a different invoice by looking for the uh, correct fiscal year. Select invoice, and then I'll have to add a filter. for fiscal year 2023. See if that gives you anything. So I'm adding the asterisk as a wild card to try to apply that. Okay. I'll choose this one from Northbrook. This is the correct fiscal year. Sorry about that. So to cancel this invoice, you'd open the actions drop-down menu, press credit, type in the number, select voucher or check and change the date. And this invoice was credited successfully. So this changes the status of all of the line items to credited and um, updates the expenditures of your fund records. And you will see that this has been credited in the payment history section. So I have to find another invoice now. I'm gonna change the drop down menu to invoice. Add a filter for the fiscal year to find an invoice that I can work with. And I'll open up this invoice. So to credit the line items, you need to click on the line items tab. And if you feel you may need to make any other changes before you credit it, you should make those first. For example, if you need to um, update the header charges, if you were to add one or delete one. So in order to do this, you need to undo the payment. So if I were to, let's say I had Let's say I had a shipping charge in here. And needed to also have um, some other charge, whatever it was, maybe um, cataloging services charge. So, if I needed to update the cataloging services charge because they were going to give me a credit for that too, I would then need to apply the credit with the invoice in an unpaid state to the header charge. And press okay. then pay the invoice again. So after that header charge has been credit, credited, I can now select the line item to credit. 
So if you just want to credit one item, one item, you can select it and then press credit. Once this has been credited, it completely locks that invoice. You cannot undo the payment by clicking on actions. So you can see this is all been grayed out. So it's something you need to be really cautious of, like in the staff client, that you should only credit an invoice only when you're sure that you're ready to credit it. If you have other changes to make to the invoice, you should make those first and save any line item credits until the end. Are there any additional questions? Are there any requests for any additional demonstrations in LEAP today? We have some time, it'll be a short webinar, but we do have some additional time. I can demonstrate anything else that you would like. Thank you for joining me today. Um, as I said, I will be sending out the PowerPoint presentation. This will have links to the videos in the course. And um, I would love to have any feedback. CCS is always interested in um, hearing what you think of our training sessions so we can improve our training sessions. I'm going to provide you with a link in the chat so that you can fill out our survey. I'll also be sending that out to everyone once the uh, session has ended. One moment. And there's the survey link in the chat. If you have no other questions, feel free um, to uh, contact me if you can think about any questions in the future via the help desk or want to schedule any one-on-one -on -one training sessions. Um, I'm happy to go over anything um, again uh, in one-on-one -on -one training sessions to review it with you. at any point, um, especially if you're interested in transitioning to uh, acquisitions for the first time. I see that some of our attendees today um, have not started using acquisitions yet in Polaris. So if you have any questions on that transition process and you would like to review that process of how to transition to Polaris, feel free to contact me at any point and we can schedule a meeting. So if there are no other questions, um, thank you for joining us today and have a great day.